hello hello beautiful beans it's been a hot minute since i've put up a video or done a live training since i got back from bali and had my whole parasite adventure we started the women's wellness series and then i had a bunch of family stuff come up and whatnot so i had to put it on hold and i've just been missing connecting and um, chatting with all of you and um, especially talking about something that I'm especially as I get older in age that I've become more and more passionate about and that is hormonal health and how it really connects in with um, our eating our diet our stress our relationships our income and everything else hello beautiful willow and uh, so this is something I've gone deeper into and I've just had just a ton of fun actually playing with because it involves all my favorite things. And that's everything from um, self-love, self-care, of course, food and herbs. So today we're going to be specifically talking about using the power of your cycle to have more energy, more and tap into more creativity, abundance, and also as a way to release stress, PMS, cramps, and all those like nasty, you know, just like ugh, kind of not good feelings that can come from having your cycle. And hello, Diana, oh, and hello, Laura. So glad you are all here watching live. So we are also gonna talk about the one thing that I think often really goes kind of gets put to the side when we talk about digestion and also hormones and such a big thing. Sometimes I know from my own experience that I've looked at, am I eating all the right foods and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And it's kind of like becomes this to-do list and checklist rather than feeling into the wisdom of my own body. And it's sometimes so much more simple than we make it. Why, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think I um, also the sun, I would like to thank the sun for glowing on this beautiful spring day, but I'll also take that compliment too. Thank you, Laura. Um, so yeah, we're gonna talk about the wisdom of your cycle and how to tap into it. So let's just jump right in because I know a lot of you have busy schedules yourself. So um, just to kind of go over how your cycle works and um, how your body works as a woman, um, you have three phases of your entire life. Um, your cycle as a woman includes three phases, and that is maidenhood, motherhood, even if you're choosing not to have human children. It's also, right, we mother careers, we mother relationships. Um, there's many different ways that can come across. And then, of course, crone. I think crone often gets a, a bad rap, that, that name, but it's really also known as the wise woman years. That after you have gone through menopause. Today we're gonna to be specifically talking about the years in which we bleed is our mother years, so to speak. So each of these phases carry their own wisdom and uh, I would love to talk more about each of them um, and I probably will at a different point, but today we're gonna to be talking about those phases that happen within this cycle of your life. So um, some of you might uh, have thought about your period in the past just as the time in which you bleed or the, maybe the time even leading up to it, but there's actually four distinct phases within your cycle. And each of these holds wisdom and so much intelligence and can actually really support you in accessing greater energy, like it can really catapult your energy levels, also help with your creativity, amazing um, at helping out with relationships and um, connection and um, just putting your schedule together. And um, there's just so many ways you can do this, uh, use this information, which we're going to be talking about as we go through it. So we're just going to jump right in. So uh, let's start with the time in which you bleed. So this is just one phase of your cycle is, um, you know, there's many different words for it. Uh, period, moon time, bleed. Hello, Krista. Um, so there's different words that you may use for it. I really like to call it the moon time. Um, you know, our body works with the seasons and also with the fluctuate, the changes within the, uh, the moon because the moon rules fluids. And so that, it, you know, you, we usually hear about that when in terms of um, the tides changing, right? We're like, oh, when it's full moon, when it's new moon, we know that that impacts. 
the tides. I do, like that is not my specific, I don't know much about that, but I do know how it influences the body. So sometimes it can make it more emotional when we have our bleed during full moon or new moon, or it can mean it's a lot easier. Every woman is different and unique within that, but that is why it is called your moon time. Just a little uh, fact there, kind of fun. And so your moon time generally lasts anywhere from around three to five days. And it's actually related to the season of winter. So when you think about winter, what is it, right? It's rooting down into the ground. So think about what plants do, right? They go into the ground and they, you know, I think of it, it's like they're cuddling up and they're staying warm and it's really grounding and introspective, right? There's not as much light during that time of year. It's really t usually a time of rest and a time to um, really journal. It's an intuitive time. So during your bleed, this is a really a natural time to rest. I think, you know, in my experience, we've been told that we need to push through and um, we don't often get what we need um, during the time that we bleed. You know, we're, we're working the same schedules every single day for a lot of us, you know, whether it be nine to five or whatever your schedule is. And we don't really take into account what our body needs. And that changes throughout the entire month. So this time is a time of usually more rest. So some suggestions that I have during this time is one, track your cycle just in general. If you're not already tracking your cycle, please do begin to do this. Even if you are not regular, especially if you're not regular, definitely start tracking your cycle. Um, I'm gonna be putting out a trackle, a trackle, a tracking guide fairly soon here. We're just finishing it up. And um, you can also use one online. Um, I personally love Woman Log. Uh, there's also, I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly, Kendara um, is also a great tracking um, guide app that you can use um, on your phone. So start tracking your cycle. And if you see that pattern and you're regular, um, I really suggest putting in at least a day or two of rest within there, scheduling it in for yourself. That way you have time to rest because your body actually really needs that, right? Um, she also needs extra iron during this time. Um, a herb that I really love for iron, just to give you a couple, is uh, Dong Kwai and also yellow dock root and nettle. Nettle is especially great right now during the spring because it also helps with allergies. And one you can usually find readily available anywhere. You don't have to go to an herbal store in order to get it. Hello, Tanya. So um, those are a couple herbs that I also like during that time. So start tracking your cycle, give your space, give yourself some space to rest. Even if it's just an hour, I know we got some busy mamas in here. Even if it's just an hour, 15 minutes, make that, make yourself a priority, make your body a priority because when you do that, you'll have energy more throughout the entire month. And I'm so serious about that. How you move with your cycle influences your entire month, your creativity, your ability to access greater financial freedom, all of it. So really schedule that in for yourself. Um, this is also a time of great introspection and intuition. So we have access to lunar information and this starts right before our bleed and during our bleed. So those things that often kind of like I know that I used to, so I'll use myself as a uh, example on this, is I used to kind of feel a little bit crazy. Um, and sometimes I think when we get right labeled as hormonal or when we're off our period, we're like, oh, that was, you know, I'm sorry I said that. Um, I was just like really hormonal during that time or whatever it is, and we're called crazy. The truth is that that is some of the most intuitive information that you can have access to. So if there is something that is consistently coming up during this time, if you notice you are annoyed with a certain person during this time and kind of tend to have the same argument possibly, or if it's the same things that really come up, like you go, I just hate my job. Or, um, you know, it could be anything from like, wow, I just, every time I'm around that person, it's terrible. I just don't want to talk to them. You're, those are real insights into things to change in, to, in your life. Not necessarily the time to act upon them, but the time to write them down, reflect on them, and just give notice to them. So if you're like, wow, like I just kind of let out a whole like, whoa, 
like ball of fire on someone or on yourself or you're just like frustrated, journal about it, let it out, do a voice recorder if you don't like to write and get that information out because you're gonna use that at a different time of your cycle to actually act upon. So really important to take notice during this time what is actually irritating you, frustrating you, that you do not like, or that you absolutely love about yourself. So also giving attention to what you just love, 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 love about your life. And write all those things down because that's really gonna help you figure out you know, this, you know, what actually needs to change. And it is one of the reasons for PMS and cramps. So the one thing that is, um, that I think really when it comes to PMS and cramps that often gets overlooked is, um, stress and emotional balancing. We often look at hormonal balancing, but what that really comes down to is emotional imbalances. And, um, PMS and cramps in um, Christy Northrup book, she quotes the exact studies that have been done um, and that it, it is just as much of adrenal fatigue and hormonal imbalances that are caused by chemical reactions that, um, that we also have PMS and cramps from emotional reasons. So not speaking or not speaking our truth and all different things, which we're going to talk more about. So just giving notice that PM and, PMS and cramps really are st have strong ties to emotional well-being, right? Because that has to do with stress, raise cortisol levels, raise adrenaline. Uh, that, of course, affects our adrenals, which govern our entire um, hormonal system, really, so to speak. Um, so just really starting to notice those pieces. Just some tips during your moon time of other things to incorporate uh, that I have here for notes. Uh, great time to also do magnesium salt baths. Instead of using Epsom salt, which can actually, um, especially for those of you that have gas, is magnesium salt baths will actually provide minerals that help with cravings. One of the biggest reasons we have cravings is because of mineral deficiencies. And you can be eating all the right foods, but if you have GI or um, you know digestive issues, you might still be seeing deficiencies. So take a magnesium salt bath, which is actually gonna help with cravings, relax your muscles, and just give you a sense of calm. Magnesium is a very calming mineral. Um, also, uh, Epsom salt can tend to create sulfur within the body, which means excess gas. Um, that's why we do not use Epsom salt. I really suggest using magnesium instead. So perfect time to do that, especially if you're bloated or if you have cramps also. Magnesium salt baths are really the best. Castor oil packs, also a wonderful time to do these um, to release bloat as well. So this is also gonna help with cramps and if you're bloated, just not really feeling very good, castor oil. These are also just pieces of self-care and any time we make um, we create spaciousness for ourselves is when we're also letting go of excess stress. So anything that's gonna help with that is gonna help with hormone balancing all month long. Uh, food, um, this is a time to, you know, um, really have mineral rich foods, things like seaweeds, kelp, alfalfa, nettle, things like this. We generally want more minerals during this time. Also a lot of dark leafy greens. It's also usually when we tend to desire heavier foods, um, which we'll get into during your luteal phase, which comes right before your bleed. Good time to stock up on healthier versions of your favorites. Um, so just really listening to your body, having a lot of minerals is gonna help with cravings. So like I said, dark leafy greens, seaweeds and such help a lot with cravings. Next, we're gonna go into your follicular stage. Grab a little something to drink real quick. Hmm. Ah, so I like to call this your fruity follicular phase. It's just a way to, Epsom salt, magnesium, is that the same thing as, no, magnesium salts. I get one that is just, um, just magnesium. Um, if you want to take a picture of it, Lauren, just upload it. I'm kind of curious on what that is, but I don't do anything with Epsom just because of the high amount of sulfur. Um, so. Uh, fruity follicular phase, um, easy way to remember it. This is what happens right after your bleed. And so you might notice, right, you have this rise in energy as your estrogen levels start to come up and rise that you start to come out of that grounding time. So this is also known as your springtime, right? You're sprouting back up from the ground. 
So this is the best time to start looking back at the notes you have taken during your journaling exercise. So you look back and you go, yeah, what was I frustrated about? What did I really love? I, you know, what was, what was working and what wasn't? So start to looking at those, uh, that journaling piece and go, wow, like I had some strong emotions about my job or about my partner, or about this person or about this situation in my life. Because right now you have the most access to creativity and your ability to, so your ability to create during this time. So this is a good time to start going, what am I going to do about it? So what am I going to do? What am I going to change? Right? And this is often where support comes in. It's like, <gasps> can feel like a little bit scary if maybe it's a change at a job or if it's, you know, possibly leaving your partner or a change in, um, friendship or you know anything else or even moving to a different city things like that so a really good time to actually put into place what you had reflections upon during your moon time so accessing this information as a way to go okay now i'm going to do something about it um so this is also a great time to take on creative projects during um this time so like if you're like yeah i've been kind of dreaming up because you've had this lunar information during your bleed you were like wow, wouldn't that be so amazing if this is the time now to use that information and go, yeah, that information that I got during my bleed, now I have access to more energy, so I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna start this creation. So you are gonna use the wisdom of your cycle, you're gonna really um, monetize in a way on your cycle and say, okay, like what can I put in motion? I have more energy, I'm gonna do something with it. So great time for creative projects. Um, also a great time for physical movement, your bleed, right? We don't necessarily want the whole entire exercise routine to be the same all month long. This is a great time to now get back in the swing of things and, um, schedule your more vigorous workouts during this time of your cycle. Um, you know, this follicular phase usually lasts about seven to 10 days. So this is a great time to say, yeah, I can exercise six, day six days a week. I'm going to go jogging. I'm going to go to that hit class. Like I'm just really going to go for it um, because your body will be able to recuperate much more quickly than if you do that, do that during your luteal and your bleed time. So actually maximize your workouts. That's really what this is about. When you learn about your cycle, you really want to maximize your results. Um, so yeah, rock climbing, things like that. Um, this is also time. This is why I call it the fruity phase. It's the cleansing time. So think about spring. This is a natural time. Uh, if you look at nature, when we have cleansing foods, so we're always tapping into nature. And so nature right now, what do we have? We have leafy greens coming into play. We have berries, we have citrus. These are all very highly cleansing and hydrating foods. So this is the time to really, really like focus on those more because we also want to make sure that any of the heavier foods that we tend to have during our bleed that we lighten back up. And this will also help our body. Like if there's any stagnation within the pelvic floor, um, and, uh, also release any blood that also helps too. another herb I like during this time is also some yarrow right after my bleed, just to make sure that I've cleansed out all that needs to be cleansed. So just a really uh, beautiful time of cleansing. This is the best time to also start um, if a new eating regime, so to speak. So if you're like, I'm gonna dive deeper into detox or I'm just gonna start one, but this is usually best time. It's not to say don't wait, you have to wait all month long, but it'll be a little bit easier for you during this time. So after our follicular fruity phase, we go into ovulation. So this is like that uh, va va boom and very um, glowing part. We're in summer, right? So we're ripe and full of and uh, able to receive, right? Because we're ovulating, so we're inviting in in a way. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, pregnancy with a human child, but it can mean um, being receptive to other ideas, being receptive to people. Um, also, it is a best. It is the best best time to ask for a raise or to ask for what you want. During this time, you're giving out pheromones that make you more attractive to people. So um, you tend to be glowing and um, people are just like naturally drawn to you, might go to the grocery store and think you look 
not so great, you have sweatpants on, you just you had a workout and you're just kind of feeling like a mess, people are just drawn to you, you might get asked out on a date or you know, something like that, it's like, wow, yeah, this time of ovulation, really use this energy to get what you want. And I mean that, like if you have been kind of mulling over something, so to speak, about asking for what you want, keep the, you know, if it, either do it right away or think, yeah, I'm gonna wait until ovulation. That's when I'm gonna utilize my cycle for what I want. And so you start with your follicular phase, right? You're in this creativity and you're like designing your life. And you're like, yeah, maybe I wanna change my job. And so you're like, hey, okay, you know, I'm putting out, I'm gonna to decide to put out some resumes. I'm gonna look for something different. This is a great time to schedule interviews, um, to sit down with your partner and tell them um, changes that you wanna make in your life. You actually have um, a really great um, ability. This is not during my ovulation, obviously, right now. Uh, your communication is more clear also during this time. So you'd be able to be more direct and very clear in what you are saying and asking for as well. Um, so definitely a time to utilize for sure. Um, more likely to have a raise during this time. Um, also too, for pleasurable movement, and just social life in general, you're gonna be a little bit more social during this time because you tend to be more receptive. So this is a good time if you're planning anything in your life, if you're planning events, parties, and whatnot, this is the best time to plan it is during ovulation. So plan your parties, anything like that, as much as you can around ovulation, you'll also have a lot more energy so you'll be able to give out more. So if you're looking at your calendar, really look at how you're planning your life. If it really is making sense with the energy that you have, because if you're planning things when you need rest, like let's say you're like, yeah, I'm gonna plan the giant party like this month and I'm gonna specifically you know, do it during my moon cycle and you know that, and you're just gonna be drained and then that carries on and it carries on. Everything you do has a compound effect, right? So if you're not utilizing the energy you have, you're gonna feel more drained during the entire month. So really important to do that. Um, this is also a time when estrogen is quite high. And estrogen is one of the number one reasons, estrogen dominance or high estrogen, is the number one reason besides the emotional imbalances for PMS, cramps, and other estrogen dominant conditions such as endometriosis, PCOS, fibroids, and things like that. So, um, Usually it's very hard to have high progesterone. It is so common for most women to, um, to for me to see high estrogen or estrogen dominant symptoms. Um, PMS, cramps, endometriosis, PCOS, um, irregular periods, painful periods, things like that. Um, so one of the best things you can do right now especially is enjoy a lot of fiber filled foods because you wanna make sure and flush out excess estrogen. If you are constipated, then you are gonna reabsorb that estrogen back into your system, and then you're just gonna see, it's just gonna create later on some issues with your bleed, PMS, cramps. Hi, Sarah. And um, so really so important to make sure that digestion is on point. This is one of the number of reasons you want to be using the restroom three to possibly six times a day. So for every time you have a meal, you want to be going to the bathroom. So if you are only using, going number two, having a bowel movement only once a day, you are constipated. You are constipated. And most women, especially as we get older, usually it starts around the age of 35 to 45, we start sometimes noticing some extra weight around the middle. That's usually a sign of estrogen dominance. So we wanna make sure and get our digestion in check. So always, always focusing on fiber rich foods. Um, so apples are one of my favorites, chia seeds, um, you know, just really focusing on easier to digest foods too if you're having an issue with digestion. So maybe a high amount of raw food is harder for you. Stick to raw blended foods or ones that you know are easier to digest for you. Usually it's cruciferous vegetables like um, cauliflower, broccoli and things like that are a little bit harder to digest raw. So smoothies are great, juices are great. Think of it, this is the time of summer. So that's the season that ovulation is related to. So think about just the abundance that is available to you. Uh, oh, I love that, Sarah. Yeah, oh, I'm so happy you're here. 
Uh, it's so great. To, it's good. That's so wonderful to hear that. Um, so just, just remembering that you're full, you're ripe, you're ready to receive, you're going to make more money, you're going to get what you want, and you're going to focus on having great digestion, flush out that excess estrogen. That way you feel good because um, you know, I, we're going to talk more about that and we're going to do a specific PMS cramps uh, one next week uh, for hormones. So I'm going to be talking about more estrogen dominant symptoms, but I just really, I don't want to stress it, but I want to make a point of it. It's just really important to have great digestion because stress, digestion, adrenals, hormones, they all really go together. Um, so really important to focus on all of them. So after right ovulation, this beautiful time of ripe and receiving, this is when fall comes in. This is your luteal phase. Uh, this is the time when you're heightened. Uh, you have that beautiful connection to spirit, God, source, or lunar information, whatever feels true for you. Your intuition starts to rise and you also start to ground down into that sense of self, right? So it's that kind of nesting and going inward. So really important to, to know also this time is a time to usually start slowing down things a little bit as much as possible. I know we live in a very busy, fast paced society, but like if you're really scheduling your life around your cycle, you'll get a lot more done during the beginning phases during your follicular and ovulation that then you will be able to have more rest time. And then you're gonna feel good all month long. So then even during your bleed, you'll have more energy. So pretty incredible. So that's how I really access my, how I create my schedule. And it's why I am able to have such a high amount of energy every single day. And so um, I know that not everyone here owns their own business. So I know that sometimes that comes into play, but um, you know, as much as you can take in this information for it. So uh, going back to your luteal phase is the time when, um, this is the time estrogen really reigns on your follicular and ovulation, and then progesterone takes over for your luteal phase. Now the reason why um, sometimes this can, we can kind of feel icky and not so great is one, those emotional pieces, have we spoken our needs? Have we acted upon the information that was from the month prior or the past three months prior? about like, I didn't like my job, I don't like my partner or whatever it is, or I don't like the city I live in. Did you act upon those and take actions that are helping you resolve those? If not, they have no way but otherwise to get out, it's like a volcano that's gonna erupt, but then to come back to you during your luteal time and your bleed. So um, this time is really that inward time to go back and reflect upon your month prior. You know, have I spoken my needs? What do I need to get out? Um, it's really important, um, you know, for me and my experience that if something is bothering us, if something comes up, to really speak it when it happens. Um, difficult conversations are more difficult in our mind than they are in reality. Um, so it's like, you know what, that is, you know, I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. That way it doesn't fizzle over and I become the volcano that erupts. Um, and turns into PMS and cramps and just a whole bunch of mess over here. Um, so really utilizing this time to go inward, to reflect, you know, get out anything that you still need to get out and start journaling, really nesting in. This is the time that I also really suggest prepping for your bleed because your luteal phase um, gives you quite a chunk of time to you know prepare you know raw chocolates if you want or things that are not filled with sugar or processed foods that you might know you have cravings for during your you know bleed is so that you can go you know what i usually crave pizza and i just i know i always want that during my bleed oh but you know maybe if i stocked up on or even made my own and froze it like some gluten-free pizza crust if i made my own nut cheese or just went and got that that i know that if it's in my house that i'm going to use it so this is also a way to really access that, you know, is to really prep for your bleed so it's smooth, it's beautiful, it's easy, a nesting time to really give thanks to our body for our information that she gives us and say thank you. You know, thank you for giving this to me, for supporting me all month long. And so now that I can release the month prior. So this is, you know, right when we bleed, it's a release. So, you know, before we go into that, it's really, um, sacred time 
it, it truly is. And um, it's a time to just give notice and intention and attention to it. So maybe even scheduling, you know, looking at your schedule and kind of letting the social events maybe go a little bit to the side and really taking part in more things that really feed your soul. Um, so that might, you know, the first might, part of your month, the way I look at it, it's like, woo, kind of like that, like, yes, doing all the things. And now it's the time of like, yeah, I maybe want to go to, um, you know, there's many different things. This might not be the same for you. A new moon ceremony, a full moon ceremony. I want to do yoga nidra. I want to go to yin yoga. I want to gather with my girlfriends. I want to, um, do, you know, play with my herbs and prepare myself. So utilize this time, give thanks and let go. Otherwise your body will have no other thing but to do with the stress that you've had, but it, to come back to you in painful, not fun ways. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to speak about that? Um, yeah, just for pleasurable movement too, time to take it a little bit easier. Tai Chi, taking walks, things like that, really connecting even with outside, um, you know, going on hikes that are lighter, really good time uh, for your body to have that access um, right before your bleed begins all over again. Uh, so as you can see, these are the four phases of your cycle. They're so full of wisdom and change. And when you work with these, it's like, wow, I got so much done here and now I have access to a little bit more rest. And so it's this riding this wave rather than trying to keep this consistent amount of energy because then you're just eventually so depleted, it always feels like you're arguing against your body and yourself. And this is also why I see diet changes. It's like sometimes your body actually needs something a little bit different. Um, that's why I, you know, why I stick to always a plant-based, plant-focused, um, high fruit, veggie um, way of life that I will add in more kelp, more mineral-rich foods, more broths, things like that, depending on the time. Oh, yeah, Sarah, thank you for joining. I'm so happy you are here. Um, so, you know, just knowing that it doesn't take a lot to change to work with your body. It takes just really just some, some minor adjustments, um, and it can really catapult your relationships, your, um, your work, your finances, all of that, having access to it. Um, you know, to be really honest, do not ever, um, you know, never underestimate the power of your body to tell you exactly what she needs. Sometimes um, we think our body hates us when she's really just speaking to us and um, she's just really asking you to pay attention and possibly get support so you can kind of figure out what it means for you. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people come to me and feel like my body hates me. Like every time I eat this, it's like on fire. It's just like she doesn't want me to be happy. And it's like she's just giving you some information. And you know what? You're not, you know, that's the one thing I would say too. We're not all trained at the beginning when we're a baby exactly how to take care of your body. We all have different work in this world. Like mine is health. That's what I'm so passionate about. I'm obsessed with. And um, so that's what I do where others, you know, are more passionate about, um, you know, different social justice or um, Sarah, you're so beautiful um, in terms that, you know, I, I don't know if you're still on here with beauty and helping women see their own beauty, you know, through um, self-care in that way. So we all have different ways that um, we support each other. So just give yourself credit for just doing your best when you're not necessarily trained or professional in the realm of health. So just want to offer that to you. Um, within that, yeah, so next week we're going to continue on with Wellness Wednesdays. I think this is a good day. I'm curious to hear if Wednesdays feel really great for everybody. We'll continue the Women's Wellness Series on Wednesdays. It's all W's. It just flows. It sounds great to me. Um, and so next week we're going to focus on PMS and cramps. And then the week after that, we're going to be focusing on cravings. And then we'll also go into, um, a few other things. I'm going to probably put some polls out there to see which topics really resonate with you all that you really want to dive into more thoroughly. Um, that way I can get really um, dialed in for all of you so you can get the information 
you need. So um, I'll put some polls in here to make sure this is a good time, put some polls in for our next ones. And um, also we'll have an announcement coming soon, something new that I'm uh, doing and I'm gonna need some beta testers for. And um, it's all gonna be about hormonal health and really um, being able to balance your hormones. That way you can get rid of fatigue and have beautiful glowing skin all month long and also get rid of anything that's going on with your gut and trying to fit, you know, that way you can finally figure out, is this my hormones? Is this my gut? What's exactly going on? So we have some something fun coming up next week, which I'll announce. And um, I'd really love to connect with you all about it because it's just, um, I've been doing it with a few women. It's just been um, an incredible experience and a place of connection and just really um, beautiful way to be with your body while also using science too. So. Such a cool thing. So anyways, I'm so excited about that. So we'll wait to uh, next week to talk more about that. And um, wishing, you know, or not wishing, my intention is that all of you have found something that really resonated within um, this workshop for you and that it helped support you in some way. If anything, that it brought you closer to really reclaiming more love um, for your cycle and seeing her as a path of wisdom and not pain and, um, that um, you just know how beautiful um, you are and the health that you have access to at any time. It is always there for you. And I truly believe that all of you can access um, greater wellness at any moment um, in time. So I leave you with that and have a beautiful, warm, and wonderful, powerful, potent uh, healing Wednesday. Mwah!